results from inflammation and additional uh, fat intake, meaning that if you have a lot of fat intake, healthy fat intake, but you don't have inflammatory things going on such as low carb, I mean such as high carb diets, along with that, you have a decreased risk of developing cardiovascular disease manifested as a stroke or a heart attack. My worry as far as me personally is that if I were to go on a ketogenic diet, yeah, I would probably like it, but I live a very inflammatory lifestyle, meaning that I'm an ER doc. So the combination of me having a high fat diet and the fact that I'm in an ER and my cortisol levels are always shooting, my worry is that combine that with my very, very, very stressful lifestyle, now I'm setting up myself to actually develop coronary artery disease and stroke and I have all this fat in my system. You know, it's different if I had a nine to five job, then I would more so consider the ketogenic diet. But for me, you cannot combine a high fat diet with inflammation. That's bad. And that we're learning about inflammation does a lot as far as cardiovascular disease. So that's one reason I don't do it is because I live a very stressful lifestyle and my sport of choice is CrossFit, which is very stressful to the body. I love it to death. It gets me ripped. I just feel from what I know from the pathophysiology, I haven't seen anything that studied, you know, um, ketogenic diet long term. And for me, if I have a lot of inflammation on my body because of what I choose to do as far as CrossFit and working a lot of hours, 70% of my diet is fat. I worry about that. I'm setting myself up for a heart attack. Now, um, what I like about what I follow is generally a low carb diet. The reason I enjoy, the reason I like a low carb diet because that gives me a lot more options. You know, low carb diet. I'm just focusing on the carb content. With a low carb diet, I'm just focusing on the fact that okay, I want my carb content to be anywhere between. You know, if I'm trying to get ripped, like. 10% of my total caloric intake. So there are some days if I have 10% of my caloric intake as a as carbs, that means there are some days I'm going to have my, I'm going to have like, um, so that's 10. So I may have 45% carbs and 45% I mean, so protein and 45% fat. I feel comfortable with that. Then sometimes I may have 50% protein and 40% uh, fat and then 10% of my diet is carbs. The reason I like that type of diet is because one, those type of diets have been studied for decades and they show they work. Two, look at my profile pic. There's multiple times um, I've done a low carb diet and gotten super ripped and felt wonderful. And what I like about low carb diets, to put it in layman terms, is that I'm telling my body to do the work. What do I mean by that? So I'm telling my body, hey, you don't have enough, you don't have enough carbs for energy. So what I'm telling my body to do is, hey, if you want some energy, I need you to do two things. Um, on Wilboard Prairie. I need you to take your fat stores and turn those into ketone bodies and use that as your primary energy source. Or, hey, body, I'm telling you to take that protein and make that into glucose called glucose neogenesis if you take a bi if you have a biochemistry background and make that do work. The whole point of what I'm telling you is that I'm making my body do work as opposed to throwing in glucose. I'm making my body do work. So I'm a big, 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 100% component of low-carb diets. Making your body find ways to get their energy source as opposed to high-carb diet, as opposed to shoving a lot of fat in your body. I'm not, I have nothing against a ketogenic diet. I worry about it for me because I live a very stressful lifestyle. And you got to be careful with combining fats with inflammation. We're learning that inflammation plays a major part of heart disease and strokes more so than fat content you already have people who've been doing a ketogenic diet for years and they feel wonderful they haven't had a heart attack but for me i live a very active stressful lifestyle that i'm worried about that so for me i choose to go low carb um so for me it's all about low carbs where i just say listen i'm going to focus on just taking in this amount of carbs but I'm going to take it as much fat and protein as I want. So I'm going to eat as much chicken as I can. Um, but keep in mind, when you're taking a high fat protein, you tend to overeat a lot less because you're more satisfied as opposed to that insulin surge you get from a carb diet. All right. I'm still working on my book. I'm finally making progress. I can't wait. It's going to, I'm, My goal is to get this book written in less than a year. My goal is by the end of 2018 or even earlier, um, you guys will have a book by Doc Beast. And I get to combine everything that I know about health and fitness and um, nutrition. Uh, and this weekend I'll be away on a nutritional, I mean on a 
uh, fitness certification. I get my CrossFit level two, and I'm going to be on staff as a coach at one of the CrossFit gyms. All right? So I am awesome. Yes, yes. Oh, so Bob, okay, to answer some of these questions, I tend to, whenever I talk, I look all around and think because I'm in my thoughts. The difference between a ketogenic diet and a low-carb diet is that both a low-carb diet and a ketogenic diet, they both focus on you keeping your carb content low. So you may have someone who's a, I may have a client who's on a ketogenic diet and a client who's on a on a low carb diet and their carb content the carb contents of both diets are identical identical but then so let's just say let's just say uh so i may have a carb content on both diets so let's just say five percent so they're literally identical but a ketogenic diet your fat consumption is 70 percent and then your protein consumption is 20 percent the low carb diet I may have your fat percentage as 45% and your protein as 45%. That's the difference. The difference between keto, I like just playing low carb because I want more flexibility and being able to take in more protein than I need it, if I need it. And I've done um, a low carb. I've never done ketogenic. I've never done ketogenic. But I've done multiple times low carb diets and it's gotten me ripped. I feel awesome. That's how I, that's how I have, that's how I get, I don't know if I have it now, but that's how I get six pack abs and I'm in my 230s, 240s with a six pack. I'm six feet, 240 and I'm getting six pack abs from a low carb diet because I'm teaching my body to use protein and fat stores. Okay. So plus I like the flexibility of being able to say, you know what, I'm going to eat for this meal, I'm going to eat bacon and a chicken breast. I don't have to worry because I know bacon and chicken breast have zero carbs. Whereas if you're on a ketogenic diet, you got to worry about you getting too much protein from that chicken breast. That chicken breast is too much protein. Okay? So that's the difference. I like to know that um, it's easy for me to pick out foods that have zero, cal uh, zero carbs. It's hard for me to pick out foods for me that are high in fat and not enough. Pro I don't want to worry about fat and protein. I just want to focus on carbs. Uh, to me, um, weight loss is in a... When you, when you understand what happens to the body from a hormonal level, weight loss is about insulin. Weight loss is about insulin. Okay? So if you focus on... I honestly believe you say... If you focus on a low-carb diet, you will reach all your performance aesthetic goals. You know, so, uh, and for what I do CrossFit, I need protein. So, so that's my, Ooh, you you guys are asking good questions. Um, I purchased a few of the exogenous, um, ketone supplements for me. Um, I haven't put I, I I haven't put myself on these supplements on a long over a long period of time to see or are they effective or not effective. I just prefer to put myself in ketosis if I choose that or make my body metabolize fats or metabolize protein by naturally having my body search for energy and choose it by itself to metabolize the fats on my body or metabolize the protein I have through gluconeogenesis turn into glucose. I'm I don't know if I'm a big fan. I don't know. I'm not saying yes or no if I'm a big fan of taking something that makes my body go into ketosis. And I can't really say how effective it is because I've taken those supplements multiple times. I've had zero issues, but um I haven't put it on them a long period of time. So I'm not gonna say yay or nay about exogenous um ketone supplements. Um, I don't have enough data on me to say that it works. Where I, I have plenty of data on me of going a low carb diet. True, true. When you see Bob, yep. 
when I used to be a beach body coach, I'm no longer anymore, and that's a separate discussion. Um, yeah, when 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 I get ripped, when I'm up there um, just as ripped as Sagi, uh, it's because I've gone low carb and I do like a Mark Sisson's diet. Mark Sisson does uh, he does he does a caveman diet, but the interesting thing about paleo, paleo is is not paleo is not necessarily a low carb diet. People tend to get ripped from paleo because when you when your glucose stores come from when you I'm sorry when your when your carbohydrates comes from fruits and vegetables instead of candy, um, your ins, your your insulin growth factor levels don't surge. You have an even level. So now you know you're telling your body, okay, let's equally build muscle. Let's equally build fat. You know, whereas when you take in like candy bars and candy. The insulin surge is like whoop. <clears throat> so you're telling your body, oh my God, this is a lot. So let's store this mostly as fat. And your your glucose levels fall. You become tired and weak and you misinterpret that as hunger. You tend to overeat. Notice no one overeats apples and apples are full of carbs. But people tend to overeat cookies and chips. So so that's why sometimes there's some people who are still able to get ripped from a paleo diet, not even paying attention to carbs, because a paleo diet, you naturally, because of the nature of the fiber and the insulin surge you get from apples as opposed to candy bars, you naturally tend not to overeat and not to put in too many calories. So um, Mark Sisson's diet is, is interesting because he it, the content of it is paleo, but he's still focused on not taking in too many carbs. So I like I love Mark Sisson's page. He he's the bomb. He originally was part of Beachbody, helping them out with uh, Shakeology the back of the day. So he's he's well. And this guy Mark Sisson, I think he's in his late fifties or early sixties, and he's ripped. He is ripped, skinny ripped, uh, but he's ripped. And very few people have a body like him. No homo. A body like him at his age because he each well so so that's my uh yeah dave you're right yep yeah dave yeah i'm glad i answered your question and dave that's the main reason i go low carb and not do uh keto because i don't want to focus on oh, i'm taking in too much protein screw it i want to take as much pro i don't want to worry about protein i just want to worry about one thing which is carbs i'm big believer in low carb like i'm a huge believer in low carb diets like taking as low carbs as possible and uh whatever you do whatever you decide to do um with the protein and ketogenesis to just I love it. I love it. Um, and I don't experience a low oh, from, like, I really do feel good on a low-carb diet I, when, I, when I do it. Don't get me wrong. The first three days, four days I do a low-carb diet, I feel like crap. But after a while, I love low-carb diets. I love it. Actually, I'm going to jump on a low-carb diet now. Um, so I'm going to start that this coming Monday. I've been more paleo, but I need to lower my carbs now. So, um, yeah. All right. Peace out, guys. You guys know I like to talk. Peace. Oh, yeah, I don't want to get into it. For me, it's sustainable. Um, the reason people say some of these low carb, uh, I said I was going to leave. The reason some people say, the, the reason the ketogenic community sometimes says that low carb is not sustainable is because what well, some people find that going low carb, sometimes you feel hungry or tired because your body is still metabolizing glucose. There's still not enough glucose, whereas the ketogenic diet, your body literally learns to use fat stores for energy. Um, and that's different for every person. There's some people who feel, for me, I felt fine on a low-carb diet. I felt fine. I felt fine. I didn't feel overly hungry, overly, uh, uh, overly tired. So I felt fine, but some people may find it. And if that doesn't work for you, they go over to the ketogenic. If, if low carb doesn't work for you, just go to ketogenic. 
um, diet. Because everyone I've talked to who have done a ketogenic diet, and these are people who I've seen personally in real life, they love ketogenic. So I say, give it a try. For me, I live too stressful of a lifestyle. Oh, let me stop talking because I could talk all day. I'm wondering how long this video is. You guys got me lecturing. So, all right. This weekend, I'm excited. I'm getting my level two CrossFit. Yeah. So I'll be posting this weekend. All right, peace.